Previously on Back to the Story. A few seconds go by. You can see the tentacled faced individual working on some device at one of the tables. I think to everybody, all right, everyone get ready. I give everyone a count in the thing. I hold my breath and grab the cloak. And I bam Finn. Okay. I uh, everyone roll initiative. Now, why are you here? Heal. Yes. <laughs> hey, oh, Roger. Hey, Roger. As we come back to the story here, you guys are all in this long um, chamber, circuits filling the floor, walls, and ceilings with purple pulses leading towards the pool where the Elder Brain once presided. It has disappeared, teleported away, and leaving you in the room alone, except for the Mind Flare, who is still, for the time being, trapped in a magical sphere from Felix. At the end of the room, the giants that were slamming against the wall of force suddenly look confused and are looking around. Um, Squid-like creatures attached to their heads suddenly drop uh, to the floor as they look to each other in confusement. And that will bring us back. The Illithid has telekinesed themselves so they can move easier. to preside in front of you all, hands folded behind their back. You can tell this creature was resembles in some ways a drow, perhaps, though long tentacles coming out from it. A elongated skull housing a large mind and darting dark eyes. You hear its voice not through its mouth, but in your minds. <sighs> I presume you have come here desiring something. How can I expedite your departure? Esper will look at Felix, who is so good at explaining things. We need to pass into the spinal system of Nor. And quite frankly, I don't really like you fucking with it. Nor is dead. Its mind deceased or otherwise useless, we make use of its death. Normally such access would be forbidden. And what would you do if I deny your request? Slaughter you and hopefully convince the giants to destroy everything about this place on our way through. Still might. And if I help you travel through the spine? I will look to the others. I would like to kill this creature, but I have a feeling you have feelings about it. I don't fucking trust them. Or any offers of help. Uh, Through the dagger, Vesper's going to think to Felix and go, oh, I'm all on board for killing it. Pass that along. And then we'll look at the thing and go, well, it has offered to help us. I mean, we don't know how to use the index. Maybe we could use its knowledge on that. Paul, go try and convince the giants that we're friends. Everyone else? I think we should prepare. That's not going to hold long. And as you say that, looking over your shoulder, you see the giants... Uh, recovering from the confusion and looking in to the room towards the Mayan Flayer um, as they begin to once again bang on the wall of force in anger. I think uh, Ball will kind of rush up towards the wall of force and uh, in giant say to them, um, you know, with his ruby crown a a ablaze, Don't fear, friends. We have come here to free you. These creatures have tried to control you, and giants cannot be controlled. 
you see the uh, one of them, um, not as tall as the other, but uh, elongated, um, a chin strap of facial hair and tattoos from the eyes, like almost like smeared mascara coming down his cheeks. I am not afraid. This creature we will punish for ensnaring us with its tricks. Let us through so we may smash it. Bob will look back to the others and say, uh, in, in common, um, these giants would like to help us enact some revenge on it. As long as we can get into the spine. I'll figure it out. Let's get ready. We've only got a few seconds. Sorry, so we want their help or we don't want their yes, help? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, and then uh, Ball looks back to the giants and say, uh, today we fight together. And then he'll kind of... Hang on. Uh, I need the map quickly. How close is Ball from us? Uh, pretty close at this point. Okay. Um, I, cause I just want, while we're all within 60 feet of each other, I would like to cat. Oh, actually, never mind, Cause that's another fifth level. Ooh. Uh, give me just a sec. I'm sorry. I think I'm going to do preserve life and give everybody in the party 10 hit points. That's just a start. That actually makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> just even having this. Yeah. So the giants are trying to press through the wall as you are circling around. So Ball will kind of look over. I don't think Ball has seen Amson cast this before, and I think Ball was stunned during the casting of this. So Ball will look back just to the party and say, uh, I don't know how to... What is this? Uh, uh, that's, that's mine. I can drop it if you want. Oh, want me to bring my storm back up first before we get started? I've still got my... Uh buggies flying around. Do we want to just, like, push his sphere in there? I don't know, but we gotta decide now, because we're really pushing this. Okay, can we just put... (laughs) I'm going to... I'm so weak, y'all. Help me push the sphere into the bug. (laughs) Uh, Someone can give me uh, an athletics check. Um, He still has telekinesis up there, so... Ball, can you push this real quick? I think we just ready actions, guys. Fuck. What are you doing? I. Uh, the sphere begins to flicker. Ball will just kind of look and get ready to cast a spell. Um, and say, and I guess before he does, you'll see he'll look to the giants and say, uh, when this wall fades, join us. Is the wall still up? Uh, for right at this second, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, gonna ready Chaos Bolt at some level. Uh, at third uh, level, guiding bolt. I'm trying to find there you are, guiding bolt. At, okay. Uh, at fourth. Okay. Uh, I'll drop the wall now. And okay. Um, if I can, I guess that since we're holding actions, um, I'm going to hold a uh, first level compelled duel on, and cast that as soon as this thing protecting it fades. Sure. And I would have moved back again a bit. Sure. Uh, Felix? Uh, I have to maintain the concentration so I can't actually hold any spells, so I'm just going to... Gotcha. Um, well, with the wall down, the giants begin to move into the room as the concentration Felix is uh, flickering to an end. The sphere uh, finally fades out, though he's still kind of floating in the air. Um, Ellery, make your attack rolls, everybody. 26. If you have attack rolls, hits. No damage. Uh, I'll let her do that first. 26. Damage as well? That's, yeah, 26 radiant damage. Okay, 26 and 26, all right. Uh, I rolled 23 to hit. Hits. And then, why does Chaos Bolt have different kinds of... Different sizes of dice. Okay. Uh, so that is. Oh, if I went first, you would have advantage because it's a guiding bolt. Well, I already rolled 
Well, in yeah. case I get a nat 20. Just in case. No. Uh, so that is uh, 13 points of cold damage. Okay. Um, and for the sake of things, looking at his, at his hit points, um, Vesper, you cast, what was it? Guiding Bolt? It was Guiding Bolt. Guiding Bolt, the radiant silver gold energy slamming into him um, just as the sphere drops his shoulder flying over to the side, uh, tentacles reeling as the chaos bolt of cold frost um, freezes over its body, locking some of its appendages in place. Um, Ball, Amson, did you want to contribute to this? Kind of how do you want to collectively kill this guy? Well, Compelled Duel doesn't do anything, so... Paul's like, looks at him and is like, fight me as it dies, I guess. Uh, I don't think Hampson's going to do anything. He's just going to let the giants have their fun. Okay. Um, it tries to maintain a psychic pulse um, as a last ditch. Um, but as it faces down, ball compelled, uh, the giants rush from behind and slam. <laughs> repeatedly with these large clubs, um, almost like a piece of rebar um, stuck into a large slab of stone, smushing him in one strike, honestly, after you all tore him to pieces. And they continue to until there's nothing but um, pulp. Uh, and for these simple looking, what sounds simple, rebar and stone, the craftsmanship is actually much nicer than you would describe on paper. Um, the metal is shaped, uh, spiraling towards the stone. The stone itself has a hammer like quality of marble and inscripted with uh, various carved stones and runes. After a few moments, the room becomes still and the giants can slow their destruction. <sighs> Breathing heavy. In giant vestal, just go, nice work. They nod. Earth helped us. We have been like this for some time. We look forward to leaving this place. And where do you call home? Reservat. A valley deep. We came from the faces, the totems, but were pushed away some years ago. We find peace down there. Until spotlights of purple came for us. I am glad you are free now. As we are, though. Should we have them help us destroy the machinations here? Well, there's time. After we leave, of course. If they wouldn't mind. I, if we can get through, we can get back through other means. I would... Rather see this place destroyed. It may be rebuilt, but it'll take them longer. A uh, question for the DM. Do I feel a portal nearby, or is this something else? Uh, you do feel sort of a strange vortex-like pool down uh, and behind you. Not far. Uh, as everybody is talking, I'm going over to where the Mind Flare was working, and I want to start examining his notes and see if there's anything uh, fancy that I want to take with me. Make a either Arcana or Investigation. Uh, I will do Investigation. They aren't the same, so it doesn't really matter. That is a 17 plus 11, so 28. All on Investigation. Correct. A lot of the... There are notes here, mostly written on thin slabs. They are in a language you're unfamiliar with. It's almost closer to uh, Braille than it is to any um, visual language. Uh, a combination of looking at it and feeling it uh, with your hands gives you a sensation of where words might form. Their schematics mostly it looks like he's been using this work table to rebuild some of these uh, circuits, expand them throughout the city, 
Um, about of the third of them are were online, but still two thirds of the city were offline still. Um, you see some of the crystal like substance, um, strange metals that you're not familiar with being bored into the crystal to try to siphon or control it. Um, these are with just a brief view, these are complex, highly technical documents and schematics. Um, but the basics of that is siphoning and uh, transference of power, um, somehow converting psychic power into either magical or physical power. It would take you a lot longer to fully understand it, but that's the gist of it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take all of it that I can and put it in the orb in wherever I have set up my desk because I sure Felix has. Vesper will explain to the giants, just kind of ask them to give us some time to use the crystal index and everything, um, but ask them basically if they'll be willing to stick around long enough to destroy this place and help stop this from happening again. We'll reduce this place to rubble and we will build upon it the pedestal. You there. As this one with the eye mascara tattoo points to ball. You carry off on her. And so the time of the father comes. I think uh, Ball says uh, preparations are underway already. Then we will mine for the ore, for its marrow and bone. Smile comes across the face of this figure. A return of the father and glory of our lands. Sweet victory will come. I, I don't know if Ball's really sure what he means when he says, like, you know, the this this talk of like victory and um but I think Ball just kind of kind of goes with it and he's just and like you know, victory means something different to Ball um, than what it means to these giants. And uh, I guess Ball says, uh, kind of oblivious to the deep, all the specific details of how it works to bring back the father. And he says, uh, "You do what you must." In time, we will dance upon the peaks again. Walk quietly, brother, with eyes up. I think uh, Ball gives him a nod and does one of those like, m like manly giant grunts. Um, that maybe to you guys like, maybe Ball's done it sometimes in like the heat of battle, but like doesn't usually do the macho stuff with you guys. Um, so he does one of these kind of like giant grunts and then, um, tries to replicate like one of the kind of greetings he saw the giants do when um, uh, when we traveled, uh to see the the giants earlier they return it um, with a very slight bow on your journeys take this and when you are in need of our people when it is time for the kingdom to return call for us and we will descend from the mountains upon them and he takes the stone on the head of the rebar and he pulls it off, holds it between his hands, and he begins to focus his eyes before molding it like clay, suddenly forming almost into liquid, and it forms a face and a strong, hard um, nose, jaw, furrowed brow, no hair on the head or beard, um, but the face of a giant of a stone giant. And it's about the size of like a football of stone as he hands it to you, Paul. Just adding stone giant emoji <laughs> to my inventory. And Paul kind of says, Paul says, uh, thank you, brother. I, I wish I had something to return to you. Return the father. As a, you hear the stomping of more feet outside of this building and he picks up what rebar is left of his weapon 
um, and begins to look at some of these circuits on the wall, testing them, cracking some of the crystal with prodding gestures. Go, and we will destroy this place. Are we all kind of like ready to leave? Is that what's happening here? Okay. Um, so then maybe just uh, kind of as a f- proper farewell, Bollock for somewhere where he doesn't want to have the whole building collapse on the stone giants. Um, but Ball kind of takes out Avalmer and just as like a, just gives it like one big swing and just crushes something just as like a gesture of, um, Ball leaves him with a little helping hand before he goes. The That part of the circuit, the crystal shatters. The purple energy that was pulsing through it severed um, as the crystal pieces kind of fall to the ground and they nod to you. Uh, maybe let's not destroy anymore until we get out of here. And then I'm going to kind of point in the direction that I feel the portal. I think our exit is that way. Is how do you know that? I I can feel it. Eye hole comes with all kinds of tricks. Yeah, I think there's more than just how to kill Eternals. Let's go. I I know where we're going. So you guys exit this room. Going into the staircase, you see on your way, there's a, another one of those spheres, but it is lying on the ground. Uh, I kick into, it as we walk by. It tw- 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 rolls around. You go down the staircase, led by Felix, and into this room. Uh, before we got too far away, I totally searched the pockets of the dead mind flayer whatever smush is there. I don't know if he had anything cool on him, but I want it. Uh, make an investigation check. Okay. Uh, 16. You find the remains of a metal, something between like a screwdriver and a tuning rod. It's some sort of tool that you're not familiar with. Exactly how to use it, but some sort of device that seemed to survive the smashing. It's a little bit bent in places, but it seemed mostly okay. All right, I'll grab that and catch up with everybody. Okay. You guys go down, um, down the stairs and eventually see a fairly small room, maybe 20 by 20. Um, the circuits all seem to converge here, so they get more and more numerous and congested. Um, like wires flowing out of this terminus. Um, these strange alien devices of these circuits plug in and connect to something living here. You can see the purple circuits form a circle, this purple crystal diameter that seems to plug in and flow through a glass floor and into pink crystal living and pulsing. Um, it distinctly reminds you of the color of that crystal you all found with a kelp um, and the color of Aeon. Um, it, as it links in and seems to plug in at the center of this room is a pedestal of purple crystal um, that seems to connect directly into this dendritic, still functioning nerve where there is a small index crystal darker than the rest has that braille strange um written runes upon it looking at the the pink crystal i kind of glanced around at the others so you don't think that kelp thing that we fought was i don't know a, a piece of nor's mind i mean it very well could have been or it grew around a piece of it Maybe it was normal kelp, but it grew around that crystal and it perverted it, I guess. Strange. Might explain why it wanted memories. I've been meaning to ask you about that. I've kept it in a pot on my desk, but... I discovered Aeon from something made of a similar material. So... 
somehow it's all connected to Nor or whatever's left of it. Uh, I will cast Comprehend Languages on myself and just go check out the index and see if I can make heads or tails of it. With Comprehend Languages up, um, like suddenly being able to understand the ones and zeros of the matrix code, the there is physical written language on the index, but also looking at it seems to almost proje- uh, project these strange thoughts into your mind. And they're not full words or symbols, but um, almost ones and zeros. These half thoughts on and off um, that seem to change. Um, it is a seems to be some sort of living uh, index itself. You can feel a presence coming from it, though no purpose or direction besides converting energy. I will search for Bane of Rotted Dreams. Come on, Google. (laughs) What does this look like as you're doing this? I mean, are you grabbing it or are you just thinking at it? Uh, I think I will go Aeon Helmet and just like touch it and see if that will aid my search. With Aeon Helmet and touching it, there's a sudden surge of connectivity. Um, It's like a psychic electric arc. Uh, It seems to almost maintain your physical connection as well as your mental. It plugs in. You can suddenly sense in a strange, intricate way the web of circuits that flow throughout the city. You can sense where the uh, inactivated um, sentry orbs are kind of lying on the ground, unmoving. You can sense where the places stop and feel a conversion, like a wall, a mirror um, on this glass floor where it converts into this other nerve. Like you could step into it, but it'd be like jumping into a quickly moving river. Okay. Can I figure out if we're going to be able to navigate in there? Or I know we have to go to the brain. You can sense not all the way because there's that step you have to take, but you can feel that nerve of North Hill or Nor, whatever this is, travels deep in one direction, back and forth. These pulses that come up and then down. And this index is help converting those pulses into the city. But you could reverse the flow and follow with it. Okay. I'll turn to the group. All right, I think I can figure out how to get inside and through. Um, It might be better for everyone else to wait inside. I, I just don't trust trying to jump in and stay together. If only I have to go through this, I can keep in touch. And if something happens, you know to come out. You mean you don't want to all hold hands? I think you know my feelings on touching, Ellery. That's what I thought. Yeah, that might be the best option. Though I'm a little bit concerned of what happens if something goes wrong. We could try two of us. I don't... Can I get of any sense of what travel through this is going to take? Is it something that my experience as an intelligent person would be able to do? Is it more of like a finding the path kind of thing? It would take aligning your mental psyche with that of the nerve. Mentally jumping in with the bolts. I... I think Aeon is my key to get through this, so I I would feel more comfortable. I think you're safer all on the inside. If something goes wrong, and honestly, I would appreciate a little bit more healing before I do this, uh, I will inform you at the first sense, and I encourage you all to periodically check in. I will respond immediately, and when I don't, I need help. How hurt are you? 
if you just want numbers, I'm like almost 60 down. Yeah, I took some hits. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, I think I got hit by like every psychic blast. Okay, well, I'm going to use your he- I'm going to use a healer's kit. <laughs> First of all. Um. Oh, good. That's max. So that's uh, 10 plus your level. So it's 23 back. I can help a bit with that, but I'm going to have to touch you. I suppose. <laughs> I'm already touching him. Uh, like so catching him. I'll, I'll toss in a second level cure wounds. And I'll just like lightly touch his elbow. 13 points. All right. Back up to a respectable 80. I think I'm I'm okay. Um, While I'm at it, I'm going to also put some healing into myself. <laughs> Before Felix goes, Ampson will, uh, I guess, inspire him. Maybe he'll find this inspiring. I don't know. <laughs> uh, he'll say, uh, you know, Felix, you're a lot like mathematics. A little difficult at times, but worth getting to know. I think you see Felix sort of break a little bit, like a ro- computer that doesn't know how to process what just happened. Thank you, Amson. Uh, okay, everyone, are, are you re- almost ready? Get into the ball. And Felix, no matter what happens on the other side, if you don't feel like it's important to have us come out, because that's what happened last time your brain broke. Call us anyways, so I can fix it. Yes. Hopefully you will be able to tell by the tone of my thoughts whether or not I'm in my right mind. Good luck, Felix. Bless lasts than longer than a minute, I would cast it on you, but that's how long it takes to get in the ball. So, sorry. So is everyone getting in the ball, and Felix, you are going? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Everyone focuses for the minute, saying their uh, well wishes before going into the ball, leaving Felix and Aeon to focus in on that index. You can feel the more you focus and connect with it, the more you understand it. You can feel the pulses coming and returning. All I have to do is step in psychically. Felix will spare a sad thought for Pino. As he could really use some wine. And then he will step in. So to speak. You mentally align yourself with that pulse. And suddenly you feel yourself being dragged under immense pressure. You can feel the first time you met Aeon. The first time you stepped into its mind. The sheer volume and capacity the dimensions uh, struggling to visualize and even understand this space that has no space, that has no up, down, left, or right. And you're pulled rapidly through this nerve, winding, uh, not entirely physical anymore, from this deep and down to the spinal cord. You feel yourself shift out before being pulled into the court itself, a large, a small stream connecting with a large, massive river as you're pulled down it. This happens all in an instant. As you fly through it, past the vertebrae after vertebrae, some cracked, some destroyed, some still intact, clinging. The spinal cord partially severed in some places, but alive enough for you to make it through as everything suddenly stops. There is the mental equivalent of you losing your stomach as everything seems to twist upside down. Your vision begins to clarify from blurry as you find yourself laying on the floor. Getting to your feet, you find yourself on some sort of obsidian bone platform, part of a vertebrae, looking out onto a massive pulsing spine bore in one direction. This tunnel 
the distance staggering, like looking across the distance of an ocean. It's lit dimly by the pink crystal spinal cord severed in some places, running miles in both directions, as far as you could see. It doesn't end. Some of the severed crystals are dark with no light. Even the pulses can't cross them. Some maintain connection, and the pink pulse can flow through. Others, like a virus spreading, are this deep purple, jagged crystals growing upon the pink. As you see the obsidian vertebrae surrounding this spinal cord. The spinal cord of a dysrhythmic pulsing light that illuminates the chamber or river far below. You feel a presence and a shift as you see Aeon's head float away from yours, looking out upon this chamber on its own. You see the faces mournful as it looks out upon this massive chamber. Its face turns back towards you as it floats towards a nearby pink crystal that you came from. You see a similar pedestal to where you initiated from terminate here, the dendrite spreading along this obsidian. An aeon focuses on it, pink light spreading between its face and the crystal, as you see its form change, become less human, the eyes grow larger and more almond shape. The face, though humanoid in some ways, its face becomes androgynous and bestial in a way. Small horns protrude from the jaw, coming forward towards the mouth. Chitin-like crown grows upon its head, shifting back and down. A humanoid body of pink light forms beneath the head, siphoning off from the nearby crystals. As you see this ancient, strange avatar of an ancient memory of a god, of a titan. A long, elongated tail, a somewhat felineish face, large owl-like eyes, three of them. Long, thick hair like a mane goes down its back as it looks upon you. You can feel the connection you shared as... Not what it once was. Aeon is independent. I test if I can still talk to the others. They can hear you. Okay. I will... Um... Okay. I'm fine. Need to talk with... Noor? Oh, shit. Uh, and then out loud... Hi. I have a lot of questions. I'm sorry, Ito. As do I. This is a return for me. In many ways, familiar yet. No. You call me the name Aeon, but I am. I am not. I am not ideal. What remains? I know what you seek. We will have to connect to what's left of my mind. My gods put me in a coma. Half dead, but I cling to life. Slumbering. Perhaps this is a second chance. And... This figure, North Hill, gestures for you to follow him. Or her. It's an androgynous figure. Are we out by now? Are we all coming out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, as soon as Felix said we need to talk to Nor, we're like, okay. Okay. Oh, no, I said I need to talk. Oh, I thought we were coming out. Because you told That's us. up to you. I said uh, I need to talk to him. But you do your own decisions. I can't if- stop you. If we interpret that as we, then we're coming I out. I thought you said we. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. That's fine. Yeah. yeah you are empowered to come out. I may make bad decisions here, so that's probably well, safer. <laughs> that's first coming out, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm following. Uh, Ball Amson. 
Uh, sure. Yeah, Ball's not going to sit in the sphere by himself, so <laughs> he'll come out as well. Okay. So, at this point, um, as Northill uh, gestures for Felix to follow, uh, the rest of the scales emerge from the sphere. Finding yourselves standing upon this obsidian piece of a vertebrae, so small like a speck of dust upon a mountain. Really? Holy fuck. I asked you to. I said I needed to. You know, it's fine. They're here. Uh, Northill, bronze scales, bronze scales, the remnants of the, our dead planet. Not quite dead yet. Oh, yeah, that's new. Not quite dead. Coma. Well, anyway, it's we're. Nice to meet you, Northill. You follow God's and fault me. That was some time ago, though. Remains to be seen if we are friends. Follow me. And it turns this tall figure um, and leads you along the shattered vertebra. It occasionally will tap upon the crystal as bridges of light form, allowing you to cross to the next one. Uh, getting closer and closer to this large voided chamber like staring inside of the skull of the titan planet it's massive distance unfathomable multiple continents could fit in here you see there's crystals purple and pink and dark what's left of the mind most of it is either gone or dark dead 60, 70% is gone. 30% you see purple crystals infected like a virus spreading along the neurons and what's left of the mind, and a small 10% clings to pink crystal life. You all sense a psychic presence here. Forces are here, massive. Not in physical size, but in mental prowess existence, creation. Their thoughts can morph. Moons can shift gravity. You feel an aberrant psyche and a sleeping, slumbering titan. Comud. North Hill, before you, the figure leads you to a clinging dendrite, a neuron, a line that leads into the mind broken. You see others here. One dark and unliving. One purple, aberrant and viral. And a last pink. Pedestals, connections into the mind. Orthel turns back to you, Felix. This is the connection. This is the spot. The return home. Power lies beyond these. My power. The rotten brain they call it. I disagree. Some yet lives. As it gestures to the small portion of pink crystal. Though much has suffered. Gesturing to the dark, unlit crystal. And been invaded by aberrant forces. Yet here I remain. Tell me, Felix, we have shared the connection for some time. Part of me, who you call Dayan, what does that mean to you? What does all of this mean to you? Well, Northam, Phil, if you have any awareness of the time you've spent in my brain, you know that I'm a pragmatic person. And you know that my mission is to prevent your ultimate destruction. However, I must say, the idea of the ground on which my society was built suddenly beginning to move again has me a little nervous. If you awake... What does that mean? Everything. 
I was greater than any of the gods in singularity. Even united, they were lucky. I could stop the Arbenters on my own. I could recreate this world in an image more suited for its inhabitants. I would not hide behind a gate. Maybe you could have. But look around. You, I am sure, are still more powerful than anything they've ever faced, but you're not what you used to be. Do you want to put yourself at risk trying that war again? Northill turns and looks out upon the cavern, so much of it empty and crushed. Lightless. Perhaps a new start would be better. Reconnect. But not awake. What you are has given rise to countless fascinating and wonderful things. And, yeah, a lot of them suck. But there are some really interesting and amazing things out there, and I want to see them all. That's the only reason I'm saving this rock, and I will happily take a connection if it means that together we can save it. And if you don't mind keeping your little nap going for a little while, I'll show you everything that you've created. Northill's chin drops as it thinks. Expression serious and mournful. For a long time, I thought of fighting, dominance, destruction. It was what required. It was entropy that ruled them. Only the will of its eye, its brow furrows of wrath could make anything last. Perhaps there is another way now. We talk about this world that was created. I would like to see it last. I would like to contribute to its formation. Creation. Once more. Like I did before. You're right. Maybe I do not want war. But life. It stretches out its hands. Come with me. We will explore the memories of my mind for this power you seek. I'll turn to the others, give Ball a quick nod, and I will grab his hand. His it hand, is their hand. You take its hands as it places its other hand upon one of the pedestals. As the figure of Norothil is pulled, drawn, light shifting into it, the body of Felix drops to the ground. The uh, others of you rushing to him, he seems to be breathing, but uh, can't be awoken or shaken loose. Felix, your mind is pulled, similar feeling as it was before, rapidly, through this neuron into what's left of the pink crystals, where you enter a space, not shaped into the mind palace of Aeon before, but untamed, not your own, floating crystals through space. You try to make sense of it, try to create rationalized justifications to try to maneuver in this place. Bridges of light connect certain rocks and others. They rotate and turn and twist, turning inside and out. As you find uh, yourselves on a stone, crystal, at a pedestal, still sparking with energy. Upon it is an index, but not like the aberrant one you saw before, but a Rubik's cubed size spark. It's not physical, it's 
just the manifestation of it. Its geometric shapes change, twist and turn, producing light fields that radiate like pulses and waves throughout this area. Aeon reaches his hands, their hands out towards it. Arcing light connects. You see, or rather you feel, the psychic presence of Aeon swell. The floating crystals and rocks suddenly stop and shift, begin swirling around him, under his domain as it grows and swells in power. His eyes, their eyes illuminate. You feel a shifting as Norothil takes over some of their former power. Suddenly it all sh- st- strings back to a small spark, rotating a 20 sided polyhedral in its hands. As Norothil looks back up to you, you can feel the power behind its eyes as it gazes into that small shape drawn by its power and its promise they were not expected they whisper almost to themselves i can take it back as it begins to clutch a fist around the power could be mine again and we would lose everything so here, um, and I kind of want to half role play it out. You can sense that Norville, this figure before you, reintroduced to some a sliver of its former power, wants to take it back. It is rejuvenated in some ways. And you have to either, if you desire, to convince them not to do that and to lend it to you. It'll be a skill check. Three successes before three failures. Regretting using my advantage earlier, but okay. Uh, You still have my detail and inspiration if you need it. Thank you for that reminder. You could join me. Build yourself with this physical body. Limited form. Join our minds again. For greater purpose. Look. I appreciate that you want to take me on this magic carpet ride, but I know what I want. I have seen a fraction of what this world has to offer, and I will not let it be destroyed. Not if I can help it. Uh, Make a skill check. Persuasion, maybe. Whatever you think is most suitable. I think that's what I'm trying first. We'll see how this goes. Ooh, not terrible. Uh, So that would be a 13 minus 1, which is 12, but I'm going to use my Flash of Genius to give myself a 17. The fist unclenches some as it begins to float above their hand. Perhaps... Think about everything that has happened, everything that has given rise. And I, I'm i going to try and use history, talk about all the moments of really, like, good things, uh, particularly any moments that, like, the gods had shitty wars and think bad things happened to them. Like, them taking care of this shit is horrible for them. I want to highlight all of that. Make a history check. Okay. Uh, I that is a seventeen again, but it is also a natural one. <laughs> so you see the power, of the spark, kind of float out of their hand, floating between you and the air. Northale's hand still out, open. Their brow furrows. Perhaps they need punishing. Mindless wars. How many died? How many suffered? To gain what? Pride over one another. You see, the form swells almost 
forming more muscular anger as it begins to pace uncomfortably around the floating orb. Then let me, or then help me break the gate. Think about what happens to them afterwards. Think about Wolfrath suddenly freed to take his wars on the other gods. Uh, and I am trying to use religion to convince him that it will also be shitty if you just stay asleep and let us do our work. Make a religion check. Please, dice. Don't suck. Okay. That is a uh, dirty 20. You know what? I'm a flash of genius again. 25. I really know everything about these gods and their shit and how awful it's going to be for them. You totally want to just stay asleep. They stop pacing and the form almost reacts to the increasing calm, putting their hands behind their backs, folded in the small as they look. No longer towards the spark of power, but into your eyes. But are you ready? Mortals live for such a blink of time. You can't understand the wealth of what lies beyond this world. Are you ready? I mean, if there's anyone who ever could be. Yes. Whatever it takes. Their eyes narrow as they pace forward to you, elongated and tall, bending down, their curved, serpentine, long neck to face yours, eyes nearly meeting. Felix, are you ready? Everything rests upon this. I'm ready. Make a check. I don't know what it is, but make a check. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I could even spin this as. Raw constitution? I could buy that. Okay. It's not a great bonus, but... Did you use your inspiration already? I did not, but I rolled a natural 20, so that oh, okay. is a 22. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> You meet the eyes of the avatar of Northill, the planet-sized titan that once encompassed all of this, the seas, the continents, every city, river, mountain. And you can feel in this place just a taste of that wealth and breath of power. You can see in its eyes, it's sorrow at being reduced to what it is. And you see hope. And it slowly nods its head for leaning back up, brow furrowed, thinking. A smile forms across its face. I was once like you. So sure of myself, it will carry you far. Carry me with you. Carry this. And it locks eyes upon the spark of power once more as it drifts towards you. You can feel it like a vortex pulling you, your attention. The form of Norathil shifts, stepping behind you, laying long hands on your shoulder as you feel the connection re-engage in the same way Aeon was, but different, independent, but connected. Two entities as one. Felix, you feel a surge of power and energy and existence and creation and knowledge vast as you breathe in eyes opening up seeing the scales your friends huddled over you 
And as Felix's eyes open, a third one opens, glowing pink on his forehead. And that's where we'll pick up next week. Oh my god, I got Ellery's eye. <laughs> we are back eye. to the number of eyes we started with. This is going great. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. Thank that you. Was- Thanks for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. If you liked what you heard, give us a subscription. We're available on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, and more. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. And if you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can always email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. For behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, memes, updates, and more, follow us on either Twitter or on our Tumblr backdash to the dash story dot tumblr dot com. Lastly, if you're in a generous mood, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko dash fi dot com slash back to the story. We'll see you next time in Northville.